Hello everybody, this is Zephyrian Nick, and welcome to Magisite. Magisite, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, I've been playing this game for a very, not long time, but I've been playing it, the reason I'm going through this is because I'm just out of, <laughs> out of uh, habit really, because I deleted my save file, and I'm going to be starting a series on this, going through and unlocking hopefully everything that I can, the pig folk might be little difficult to unlock, so you have to beat the game without using a health potion. Now, how this works, you can pick a different, you can pick your race, yeah, you can pick from your races, and each one starts with a different starting item and a different stat. Now, you have different variants of that character, changes the hair, different hats you can unlock, and different companions you can unlock. Now, what that is, the variant is purely cosmetic, the hat gives you different bonuses, and the race give you slight, like I said, H, you know, starting bonuses and different items. Now, you unlock those off of a random chance off of doing something in the game. Such as if you go to race, 20, the Nova is 20% unlock after slaying 15 monsters in a single playthrough. That is at least 15. It's not an exact number, of course. Now, the stats button. The green, white means they have a regular chance of upgrading when you level up. Green means they have a better chance, and red means they have a worse chance. You have different traits you can get, like Lockmaster, you don't need a key when opening chests or locks. In Defensive, you'll, this character gains 4 HP and loses 1 attack. You can click the stats button to re-roll, basically. Now, Dexterity has a lower rank chance of leveling up, but Health, Attack, and Magic all have a higher chance of leveling up. As you can see, they all have different starting values now, too. I have the trait of Artisan, which is plus 10 luck. I don't know why they didn't just put a U in that. When crafting weapons or gear. That can change the modifiers that are on the equipment, meaning... It can all of a sudden deal more damage or less damage. Some, well, I mean more damage. The luck does not go negative. And Swift, more dexterity. Big Eater, Woodcutter, Hunger Cap is doubled, and 50% chance your axe won't lose durability. There's a decent number of these. Aggressive and defensive is a good combination to have. Gatherer and Intelligent. Gather 50% chance to collect ingredients. Potion Brewer. I'm actually going to pick this one, because a Potion Brewer is horribly convenient. And now you start in this. This is a, in, actually in the game, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is basically a roguelike permadeath game where your goal is just to really go as far as you can. I have never beaten the entire playthrough. Uh, those guys are a bit of a challenge at times. Really until, see, he stopped. They charge like that, then they'll stop for a few seconds and turn back around. I, I actually, you also start with some other items. I start with a Oh, this happens too, I've noticed. When you start off a game, it will occasionally lag, like right when you just load the game. I start with raw chicken, which can poison you, by the way. And a piece of ironite, which two of those will turn into iron. Now, you can right-click to separate stacks regularly, like you would in a game like Minecraft. Or you can left-click and then right-click to drop one. Now, how the crafting works in the game is you saw me craft these two pieces of wooden planks, and now I will craft a wooden blade out of those two planks. Use that to make a pickaxe. How you, what you do to craft is you shift and you click. And that will help you, that will create your items. Although you have to pick items that are compatible with one another. You can't shift click, say, a piece of monster hide and a wooden axe and make something. You really, you obviously can, oh, I accidentally fell laying down a spider. You can, of course, look up all the crafting recipes yourself, and that way you'll have all of them in front of you. Or, you can do what I enjoy doing with this, and just discover them by yourself. Now, it's very easy to occasionally, this is all procedurally generated, so it's very easy to accidentally land, well, not accidentally, you don't have any control over it. Very easy, and not exactly uncommon, to start off the game, and have some really, really hard to kill enemies spawn right next to you. Such as a, there's Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, oh yeah, your items do have durability too. However, you can spawn right next to Tyrannosaurus Rex, as an example, right off the bat. And there's not much you can do about that, really. As you can see, I got stone and coal from that, off of a golden rock. Now, the quality of your pick determines the quality of what you get from, oh, I shouldn't have done that. The quality of what you get from breaking rocks, from mining, and I believe... I don't think it has any implicate any impact on for wood cutting. You can of course damage enemies without using a pickaxe, you know, say 
Oh, I. You can also dash using E and Q, and I accidentally dashed in the wrong direction. Alright, I'm gonna build a stone pick as quick as possible because that will allow me to get these rocks right over here. Those are called ironite, which is where you would get this ironite ore from. You use that to make iron. Which, of course, you can make better equipment with, and you can get up upgrade to gold and equipment, and then eventually diamond, and I think there's stuff beyond that, but I've never gotten that far. And it just goes so on and so forth like that. Now, this game is honestly fairly difficult. Those deal one damage. And I will I will just say, for the, the fun of it, that I am intentionally taking damage. I'm really not, don't worry. That I'm intentionally taking damage so I can show you how the regen system works in this game. You don't regenerate. You will not... Why am I not getting... Oh, I'm using my wooden pick, damn it. You will not get a... There we go, I'm just gonna get some food from them. You will not get some any health back at the end of a level unless you have a certain perk or a certain item. There is, I believe, a perk that you'll regenerate health, but I'm not sure. And there's also an item you get, a companion, that regenerates health at the end of every level. One health, though. Now, I take these herbs as an example. Combine them together, and I got a big health potion. That is because of my brewing ability. I have a 50% better chance of gaining a large potion off of basic ingredients. Normally what would happen is I would combine two of them together and I would get a very, like a smaller, it's called a small health potion. And you combine two of those health potions together in order to get a large health potion. Now, I'm picking up those blue mushrooms. Those blue mushrooms, I'm taking a lot of damage as well. Those blue mushrooms can combine with one of these to make a mysterious potion. Those are kind of random. Right click, it could give you three mana. It could be poison. It could do nothing, or it could give you health. It's very random. Now, in order to cook your food to bring back your hunger, you can either take two pieces of coal and combine them together, or you can take a piece of coal and a rock, and you make a fire starter. Take that fire starter and right click, and you'll create a fire. You right click with your food, and that cooks your food. I'm actually going, also going to cook that chicken. There we go. Just to get it out of my inventory. Whenever you eat, you take a massive shit in the ground. It's the same size as your character. It's kind of kind of weird if you think about it. Alright, so I have the uh, the stone pickaxe I want. I do not have enough iron to be able to make an iron pick. So what I'm actually going to do is make a stone pick. I mean a stone sword. Like so. That way I'll be able to fight with that and so I use some durability on my hammer. Now these NPCs. You can kill these chickens, by the way. You can also kill the NPCs, and there's really no penalty for it. I don't know what you gain from it, because I've never actually done it. Let's find out. There we go, you just gain money. That's it. Now, these guys, the blacksmith, you put two of any ore, and you get a bar. I'm not going to do that quite yet, because that would be kind of a waste of space right now. This guy, you can buy these items if you have the proper amount of money by pressing W underneath them. You press W to interact with NPCs. You can't interact with all NPCs. Like, I can't talk to him. I can talk to him because he can craft cloth armor, which is usually... It's only useful for magic-based characters. I typically go with melee-based characters. You can also sell items for gold. You get a very, very small amount of gold, which usually is only based off of how many is in the stack, I've noticed. So it's very... Not the best system doesn't make a ton of sense, but if you think of everything being impoverished, it makes sense. To progress from level to level, what you do is what I did there. You have to get to the end of the level and press W to go through one of those doors. Those doors will take you to different locations. Before you go to another level, you always go to a town like I did there. There we go. Got that blue mushroom. I typically sell the mushrooms because I don't really use magic-based characters. Anyway, and... There's different kinds of levels. Like, this forest is not the only level. This forest is by far the easiest level. However, there are some areas that have basically covered in almost fairies of sorts. And other ones that are... There's basically a hell-like hell area. There is a giant dungeon. See, that's what I meant. HP potion gives you a standard amount of two health. The larger one gives you five. So there is actually a benefit to combining your potions together. Aside from, of course, taking up a little bit of inventory space. These guys are a pain in the ass, so I'm not even going to attempt to try and kill that thing. I have killed that once, and I had an overpowered item that I found. It was called a Zwi It was a Zweilander. I had found one of them just lying on the ground. Not lying on the ground. It was actually in a treasure chest. And that combined with one of my warrior abilities that you can get as you increase your level. 
I had extra attack damage from that ability too. And it still took me a very long time to kill that thing of dealing almost 100 points of damage. As you can see right now, I am doing 8. So there's really no logical way I'd be able to kill that thing particularly easily. I'll show you how to kill these, really. You can get away from the charge out, or you can just jump over them and then hit them in the butt. Of course, I hit him in the head because he turned around, but... Alright, there we go. Now, these guys will drop hides and meat, and occasionally monster bones. Now, this is what happens when you get to level 5. Every 5 levels, I believe, you can get another skill path. I'm gonna take Warrior, and I get Guardian's Aurora. You and nearby enemies take 4 less damage for 10 seconds. You can use the Z, X, and C keys as your ability buttons. Z will control this ability, X the next, and C the final one. You can only get 3. So, you can kind of... Oh! That would have been bad. These only deal one point of damage. But still. Damage is very... One point of damage can ruin the game for you. Very easily. Now that up there. That is a wasp nest. Where if you hit that enough times, wasps come out. If you hit it too many times, a bunch come out. And they will try and kill you. There we go. Another big potion. I'm just going to use my smaller potion right now for inventory management purposes. There we go. And I'll sell probably all those blue mushrooms. It's not exactly a great idea to just... That's what I was talking about. That's the game's version of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, basically. And you start off the game, they can very easily kill you. I mean, they're not terribly hard to kill once you get any sort of real gear. Oh, but they deal a lot of... Ah! There we go. I'm going to need to use a health potion pretty soon. These ones heal five, so I'm just going to wait until I get probably another point of damage before I use it. As you can see, I'm avoiding the golden ones. The golden rocks. It's kind of pointless for me to mine those out unless I want stone, which I really... I'll try and kill this guy, I guess. So you can see here, they have a lot of health. I'm actually going to use my ability and increase my defense. So you can see now I'm only taking one point of damage. That lasts for a certain amount of time, and they have a cooldown period on them as well. Leveled up. Fantastic. Let me combine those and get another potion back. There we go. Now, for the sake of showing different areas, I'm going to go to another pain in the ass area and go to the frost area. The Vineyard Tundra. There's various districts. I believe you go through, like, I think 18 districts in the game before the game ends. But do not hold me to truth on that, because I'm not completely positive. Now, as you can see, I have a decent number of Ironite ores at my disposal. I'm going to eat some food, too. There we go. Enjoy that poop. This is when it's good to have money, though. Because occasionally you get these deals where you get Diamondite Swords, which are insanely powerful, for not a lot of money. Now, instead of just directly making armor, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a pickaxe and sell the stone one, no matter what the durability would be at. Because it's a whole lot better to have a full quality iron... Well, that doesn't happen often. A full quality ironite pick than it is that. And my stone sword is running low too, so I might have to... I don't have any more stone. I'm going to make iron. A, an iron chest plate first. Now, these chest plates, they increase those stats... HP and attack. The Iron Knight does. As you increase in tier of equipment, in yeah, your equipment, they will gradually deal different kinds of damage. I mean, not different kinds of damage. They'll, their stats will, of course, upgrade as you go on. Do you have anything I can sell you? Well, I can sell these monster hides, and I'll. Don't think I'll sell the monster bones because if I get another one of those, I can make a blade and make a, mo a bone blade, well, bl a bone sword. While they're not bone items, are not the best. They're far from the worst. I was getting some water, I apologize. Now, these guys aren't terrible to kill. They're not... They don't deal... Well, they deal decent damage. As you can see, they're fairly easy to avoid. My sword is about to break. That's a bit of a problem. Now, you cannot mix... You know, bring make your own iron bars. Your own, your own gear bar. Well, not gear bars. Your own bars of anything in this area. They have to be brought to a smith. Uh, I need to... I need to try and get another piece of stone or another did I get another bone from that I didn't oddly enough these slimes can drop bones too which I don't really understand I mean they're slimes slimes don't have bones they're they're amorphous I mean that's kind of where it's kind of where their name comes from is the fact that oh these levels later levels do have terrain things like this that fall from the sky and can damage you these guys are pretty bad. They're not terrible. I don't actually recall ever taking a hit from one. Oh, I have a ton of stone. Never mind. What am I doing? Here. What I might as well do then is if you take two uh, two bars, you make a blade. If you make take two blades together, you make a great blade. You take an axe handle, 
combined with the Great Blade, you make a Great Axe, which deals a decent number of damage. It's so weak right now because it is stoned. Now that is stronger than any really any stone weapon you'll get in the game. These guys aren't fun either. They cast ranged attacks that go through terrain. Which is annoying considering you don't have any attack ever that can go through terrain. Nor should any attack go through terrain at all, I feel. But they die fairly quickly. But they deal a decent number of damage. You can easily take a lot of damage before you realize what's going on. I'm going to kill that rabbit. And continue getting more iron ore. It's very, very, very important to get to get geared up pretty much as quickly as you can. Oh, as you can see, some of those rocks, they come to life into like these little crab things. You kill them and you will usually, I think, get ironite from, well, whatever ore it was from them. I don't, uh, that's not optimal. I was hoping for a larger potion than that. Also with the mushrooms, as you can see, I have mana potions in my inventory. You combine two mushrooms together, you get mana potions. I'm going to just make these big ones. They'll sell for more and they'll clean up more inventory space. Oh, dear. This is a nasty area. I'm actually going to use my armor spell just on on the off chance I get hit here, which I probably will now that he's trying to charge. Oh, I killed both of them at once. Okay. There we go. Ah. Wow, I didn't know he did that. I'll be honest. I'm actually just not even going to bother trying to fight them. I really was not... Oh, there's more of them. Sometimes you'll just get, you know, screwed over by the game's RNG like that. Like, I was having a really good run, and I came into the hell biome, and instantaneously spawned in front of about three things that would fire fireballs that went through terrain that did eight damage apiece, and I was with full iron gear. So as you can see, I died fairly quickly because they fired three of them at once. Ah, I was hoping I wouldn't take damage from that. On the bright side, I will have lots of magic items to sell. You know, just for shits and giggles, let's go through here. I'll probably die once I get through this area. No, this isn't the hell area. I'm sorry. This is the, uh... Oh, thank God. That was a really good item to get. What this is... I believe this is kind of like a... Ah, uh, it's kind of... I know there's a lot of sheep and kind of elf-like things in here. It's a really weird area for what it's worth. It's really cool, but it's really weird. Now, I'm going to sell all of those, and I gained about 10 gold from that. So it's like two, two gold per item. It doesn't matter what item it is. Excuse me. I personally don't like that. But then again, I'm not in charge of making the game, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's get the monster hide there. Those pelts. I should probably just sell that stone pick. I mean, it's not going to be any good to anyone ever, so... It's okay as a backup pick, but even as a backup pick, it's not the best. All right, let's come down here. Oh, chicken! Yay! Oh, he didn't actually drop chicken. Nope, didn't drop any raw chicken. And now with this, I will combine that and make the end of the armor that I need. Make the helmet, which is another 2, atta two HP and 4 attack, and the shield, which is another 2 HP. The shields, I don't believe, ever provide attack. No, wait, some of them do. There's some you can pick up from treasure chests to provide an attack bonus. Now, what can I do here? I can't really do much of anything. I don't really have anything I can upgrade. I could make another fire starter and cook the rest of my food to clear up some inventory space, which I think I will. Now, you can make those fires anywhere. You can make them on ice, even. Which is a little derpy, but you can still do it. I don't understand. I don't agree with the fact you can, but again... The game is still in development, of course. They're still adding up, making updates, and adding things to the game, so everything might change. See? Sheep and mushroom men. That also fire attacks at you that you can't block. <laughs> and deal a decent amount of damage, for what it's worth. And take a lot of damage, too. I'm also not the best at this game, in case you can't tell. Alright. Oh, what? I didn't know I was attacking, then. There we go. Well, okay, I actually lost a substantial amount of health off that encounter. Uh, come on. All I want is that gold. You know, screw it. I'm just going to go to this gold. I'm likely going to die in this zone, to be honest. Just due to all the magic things that come toward me. I have still not adapted to this game quite enough to be able to dodge a lot of things fluently. And ranged magic attacks like that are some of the ones I have not yet really been able to master the dodge of. The reason I'm still mining this iron is that way I would like to make optimally an iron... Oh, no. Okay. I was hoping to get some sort of 
the gel from him. Okay. Ooh. Come on. Move. Move. Oh, okay. That did four hearts of damage. I didn't expect to do four. I expected to only do one. This is the screen you get when you die. It tells you how many enemies you beat. Your gold collected. Over the run. <laughs> uh, total experience acquired over the run. Items crafted on the run. Trees chopped over the run. Ores mined. Resources gathered. Foods eaten. Chests opened. Bosses beaten, which I apparently I beat a boss at some point. And items purchased. You open these chests and you get things. Get the Berserker Scarf and 50, yeah, 50 extra points. Now, that'll be the end of this first episode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play again. I'm going to keep recording, but that was it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is more of an informative video. The rest are just going to be playthroughs. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.